Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I'm Jason, and together with my wife Lexi, we run Longbottom Farm, which is a small family farm of me and my wife, and we raise grass-fed beef, woodland pork, pastured poultry, and eggs. Uh, we sell through websites and farmer's markets, and this video is about sharing a little bit of how we manage our farm inventory using Google Sheets. All right, let's get into it. So, what is Google Sheets? Google Sheets is a powerful, free tool provided by Google it allows you to create and manage your spreadsheets online. Not only is it accessible from any device with an internet connection, but it also has collaborative features, which makes it really easy for Lexi and I to work on inventory in real time. All right, so let's get started setting up our spreadsheet. First thing you'll need is a Google account, and that's pretty easy. Just go to google.com, uh, click in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see a box that says create an account. Click that. Once in there, it's gonna ask you for some information. Once you provide that information, it's going to give you some options for email address. You can choose some of the given email addresses or try to create your own as long as it's not taken, it's yours. Then you'll create a password and that's it. You've created your account. Once you set up your account, then you want to head over to Google Drive. This is where you'll find the ability to create documents and to create the spreadsheets that we're going to talk about today. Let's have a look. All right, guys. Here you can see our master spreadsheet. Um, I'll go through each tab individually. When I refer to tabs, I'm referring to these sections below. This is price list, beef inventory, pork inventory, chicken inventory. We have a number of tabs at the bottom. Those are tabs, and each of those are a different spreadsheet. The way we have our setup is we have our master price list here. This is our pork, beef, and poultry. It's the price per pound for each cut that we sell. Then there's also a wholesale price, and this is set up where Say for instance, pork tenderloin, let's just say I change the price to $100 per pound. Then it'll change the wholesale price to 70. So it's set up to change the wholesale price based on what the retail price is. And that's typically a 30% discount off of retail is what we offer the stores that we have our products in. I change that back. Uh, so we'll go through each tab. Um, one other thing is that all of our prices go here. Any of our tabs, that reference a price points back to these prices, meaning if I change the price, say for pork tenderloin here, in any of these tabs that have pork tenderloin factored into a bundle or a bulk share, it's gonna change that price there. That way I only have to change the price in one thing and it changes the prices everywhere that it needs to be changed. Um, this just is for simplicity and also occasionally you have to go up on your prices based on feed cost or market environment, whatever's going on. So. This is a way where we can be sure that we're not missing anything. Again, when you raise the price of your ground beef, if it's in one of your bundles, that means your bundle package needs to go up a little bit as well to reflect that. All right, we'll look at our inventory tabs here. This is our beef inventory. And essentially what you see is we've got a total price. This is how much the amount of beef we have on hand is worth at a retail price. Um, again, this just gives me a visual of kind of where we're at how much we have on hand. Um, everything's broken down into major categories such as steaks, roast, uh, ribs. Uh, if we go over, we've got miscellaneous, we've got offal, which is like your organ meats. Um, and then there's a price above each cut and that represents how much each column is worth. So as far as sirloin, I have two left. So they're worth 41.47. Um, so again, this just gives me a visualiz visualization of how many cuts I have left of each cut and how much those cuts are worth. Um, you'll notice that some are yellow and some are green. What that represents is uh, we just did a video prior to this about our freezer management, our bag system, and how we do that. You can watch that video here up in the right-hand corner. We have a separate freezer for all of our farmer's market items. Anything that's yellow means it's in that freezer and therefore we just take the bags out of that freezer and those go to market so I know exactly what we have at market. It also, once we sell items at the market, afterwards we'll sit down, take out, take off all the items that we sold and then we know what we need to restock. The green items here are what we have on our website. Um, we keep these separate because obviously if you sell something at the farmer's market, you don't want it also listed on your website for someone to buy because you no longer have it. So by doing this, we're able to keep our inventory separate and that keeps us from selling things we don't have and just helps us manage having two different sales channels much more effectively. Uh, we'll browse through the tabs real quick. Here's our pork tab. 
And that's kind of broken down there. Chicken inventory, which isn't much because they're at the processor right now, but we'll be restocked in that shortly. We also do some coffee, which we have here. Then we also use a spreadsheet for our bundles. Um, here we'll look at the grill beef box that we sell. This is a number of beef items that basically come in a box, and the customer gets a 10% discount on that item. Um, includes five pounds of ground beef. Basically, it's got the retail price, and then it says with that, total retail price would be. So five pounds at eight ninety five a pound will give you forty four dollars and seventy five cents. That all factors here into a retail price and then since we're discounting it at ten percent, this is what the actual price is. Um, again, if I was to change the price of our ground beef, then I would change it on my first tab on this price list. Let's just look down, say ground beef is here. Let's just say I change it to a hundred dollars. Then if I go back to my beef bundle tab, I can now see here ground beef five is a hundred dollars and that changed my retail to five hundred. Also changed my box price to six oh five at a ten percent discount is five forty five. So again, just want to make sure we're not missing anything if we have to raise prices. Um, and we'll change that back there. But again, our beef bundles, um, by looking at our inventory, if I go back to my beef section, I can kind of see at a glance that, okay, I have a lot of chuck roast. I have a lot of sirloin tips. I have a lot of short ribs. So just hypothetically, I could put together a roast and rib bundle uh, to try to move some of these cuts. Um, so it's, again, it's a way to, to help keep up with your inventory, make sure you're not sitting on inventory, and, and really just help you make better decisions for your farm. So now you've had a chance to see the spreadsheet that we use in managing our inventory here at Longbottom Farm. So I'll put a link down below where you can download a copy of this spreadsheet for yourself. You will need to edit it to fit your system, change the names of your products, and change it so that it works for you. I typically don't share spreadsheets because I feel like it's one of those skills you really need to learn. Wax on, wax off. Wax on, wax on, hey. If you just take someone else's spreadsheet and use it, then if something's off or there's a different context in the farm that you're getting it from, then it may not exactly work for you. So really knowing how to do a spreadsheet yourself is super important. But again, there's one below. You can edit it to make it work for you and work for your farm. Now let's look real quick. If say someone buys from your farm and you need to change the inventory, let's see how that works. All right, guys. So let's say at the farmer's market, I'm going to pull up my square here. And this is one of our past markets. Square will tell you everything that you sold for the day. So initially I'll look at the first line here. We sold a ground beef, a New York strip at 1.27 pounds and a beef liver at 0.92. So I'll go over to my spreadsheet. New York Strip, which I know my stakes are here, and New York Strip 1.27, there it is right there. I click on it and then I just hit backspace. Bam, it's gone. And then I'll select these three rows. Control X is for cut. Click up to the column that I just deleted it and Control V for paste. Bam. Now, the New York strip is gone. My column's all nice and tidy. I see that I have one steak left, so I know that for this coming week I'll need to pack some more of these steaks uh, just so we'll be stocked. And then we also sold a beef liver at 0.92 pounds. Therefore, we will go over. I know my organ meats are at the end. Beef liver. And I know it's going to be yellow because the farmer's market item that I've already recorded. And there it is right there, 0.92 pounds. Backspace. And then I've got 1.82 here, control X, click in the box here, control V, that moves it up, and there you go. That column is nice and tidy. And essentially what I do is just go down the list here for, for every one of them. Um, if it's an item that's sold off of our website, uh, we use WooCommerce, uh, which is a WordPress plugin. Uh, our website's through WordPress. Um, and we have a little plugin called Stock Manager, which essentially puts in all of our items in an easy to see area. You can see here we have a 10 pounds of dry aged ground beef, save 10%. We're out of stock because we're running really low, but let's say I wanted to put a couple of those boxes up. Well, I just go over here to Stock, put two, save changes, and bam. Now, if I was to go to my website, two of these boxes would be listed. So let's take those off. Um, then you've got some items like they're sold by the pound, for instance. Um, uh, I don't know. Let's look at beef heart. It's just a, a different one, but we put our things in buckets. So, for instance, you got a two here, a one here. So, 
that means I have two that are 1.51 to 1.75 pounds. And obviously if I come over here and look at my spreadsheet, I'll look at beef heart, and there I can see I have a 1.69 and a 1.75. That's the two cuts that fit into that bucket. And then I have a 1.8 pound that's green, meaning it's listed on the website, meaning it's here. And that would be this 1.76, because remember we had a 1.8 is in between 1.76 and 2 pounds. And that would be listed here. And that's an easy way that we do the cuts. Obviously you get so many different cuts, and so what we've created is basically buckets that they fit into, meaning a price or a pound range. And then we have a price that's in the middle of that range. And makes it really easy just to add a bunch of multiple cuts. But anyways, if we had sold something off the website, uh, it would automatically come off of here. Uh, meaning, uh, say for beef suet, if we had sold one uh, four pound to five pound package, it would automatically come off here. Uh, I would be able to see on my receipt that, you know, whatever the customer bought. And so I would just come over here to my bread spreadsheet and there it is. My 4.51 is only one in that price range, so I know that's it. That's cut, I'll take it out of the freezer and pack for them. And then I would hit backspace and get rid of it. So that's a quick overview of how we manage our inventory when someone buys something either through the farmer's market or through the website. And that's basically it. It's pretty simple. And if you watch this video right here, you'll see where we talked about the color coding of the names and stuff and how you can make that match with the bags that you have in your freezers. Well, this video right here talks about the bags and the freezers. Check it out. So one of the fantastic advantages of using Google Sheets is that we can analyze and then report on our inventory that we have. By using the color-coded options, we use green for website, yellow for farmer's market, we're able to quickly see at a glance exactly what we need for our farmer's markets as well as if something's not listed on the website. Also, as people buy items, we remove them from the spreadsheet. And again, at a glance, we can see what we need to replace just to make sure that we have all of our cuts listed on our website and that we're taking the appropriate items to the farmer's market. It really allows you to make great decisions when deciding what to do with your inventory uh, to make you more efficient. Efficient. So finally, the last point I'll make with Google Sheets is that it allows you to collaborate with your team. This is huge. Um, my team is just myself and my wife, Lexi. We do it all here. And still though, she may be at the farmer's market. I may be here. One of us may be on a delivery. One of us may be home. Being able to collaborate by having this online means that where she's at, she can access it. And where I'm at, I can access it. And then we can make informed decisions of what we need to do for the farm. This also ensures that everybody's on the same page and it helps us in our accuracy and maintaining our inventory. So in conclusion, I hope this video has provided you with some knowledge and some insights that maybe you can incorporate into your business. Remember, Google Sheets is a versatile tool that can be incorporated to fit your needs of your farm. Don't hesitate to explore its features and learn how to make it work for you. If you have any questions or want to share your experiences, feel free to leave a comment below. And if you got any value out of this video, if you will, please hit that like button down there in the bottom. That really helps us out a lot. A subscribe helps too. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye. It has a lot of great features that allow us to collaborate and share, that allow us to create.